I'm a teacher, and every Friday I dedicate my time to helping kids study. One Friday, like many others before it, started as a normal day, but ended up being anything but normal. Some of my students arrived late to class, and when I asked why, they told me there was a sick man on the street near where they lived, with a head injury and appearing unconscious. They said they tried to wake him up, but he wasn't responding. At first, I was skeptical. I told them to stop making up stories and not to lie about such serious things. After class, I went on my break, not giving much thought to what the kids had told me. But they came to me again and insisted the man was still there. Curious, I decided to see for myself. When my eyes locked on the man they were referring to, I could hardly look at his injury. The left part of his head and his left eye were rotting with hundreds of maggots crawling on the wound. There was dried blood all over him and the street. The smell was so awful that I could barely hold my stomach. I waited there for quite some time, hoping someone else would stop to help, but not a single person did. His condition was so bad, I didn't think he would survive more than a few hours. A friend who was with me went to get a drink from a local shop while I stayed with the injured man. I asked him if he wanted to eat anything, but he couldn't speak. He just pointed with his finger. I handed him the drink, but he was too weak to even use the straw. He couldn't hold the drink himself, so I tried to feed it to him, doing my best not to look at his infected areas, which looked incredibly painful. The smell was overwhelming, like he was rotting while still alive. Hosan did everything he could to get passers-by to help the injured man to a nearby hospital. Most people ignored him. Those who stopped suggested dragging the man to a nearby park and leaving him there. Desperate, Hosan called emergency services, but they never came. After waiting for some time, he took a video of the man and posted it on social media, hoping his friends and family might help. Unfortunately, it was during the Friday Juma prayer, so the post didn't reach many people immediately. Feeling stressed and still without assistance, Hossein went to a nearby restaurant to freshen up. There he met a local content creator who decided to help by taking a picture and posting it on his social media. The response was immediate. Five people came together to assist, including an off-duty police officer. When they tried to lift the man, his flesh began to fall apart. The smell was so overwhelming that many were reluctant to transport him to the hospital. Finally, they found a local delivery driver willing to take on the grim task. But the real problems began when they arrived at the hospital. People shouted at them because of the stench, and the hospital staff were reluctant to take responsibility. The injured man's condition and the overwhelming smell made it a challenge to get him the care he desperately needed. We tried to wash his wound with antibacterial liquid. Hundreds of insects came off from his left eye and ear. The sight was horrifying. We vomited several times while cleaning him. After waiting more than 12 hours in the hospital, we finally got him a ward in the hospital. But it felt like everyone I reached out to didn't want to help. It was as if they wished he would just pass away so they wouldn't have to deal with him. Every day, I spent time with him at the hospital. During his recovery, he lost a lot of his loose flesh, including his eye. It was very painful to look at. He was in immense pain. Sometimes he would grab my finger and gently push it inside his missing eye, trying to make me aware of his suffering. I became very emotionally invested in him. We are now like brothers. From time to time, my friends would also visit, but we still did not know his name. My dad passed away 20 years ago. I don't even remember his face. The reason I help others is that, when I was a child, I frequently had to visit the hospital due to my illness. My dad had given up on my recovery after hearing from the doctor that I wouldn't survive without being admitted to a specialist. He spent most of his time at work, unable to afford the specialist's fees. At that time, news of my illness reached an elderly person in my community. She took me to the specialist for treatment. Allah saved me through her act of kindness. I was too small to remember these stories, but my dad told me before he passed away that I survived because of a stranger's kindness and that I should always help others as long as I live. Over time, they built up a strong bond of friendship during the days spent at the hospital and later at Hosan's house.
The hardest part came after the injured man had recovered, locating his family. Hosan's post was shared across various social media platforms. And finally, someone commented that the man belonged to a village called Orail. Finding this small village was a significant challenge for Hossein. When he eventually located their house, Hossein was deeply saddened. <laughs> The man's mother was suffering from mental health issues and unable to care for herself. Their home was in an extremely poor condition, a very small space with only one bed and a single bed sheet. Someone online shared Hossein's number with me. When Hossein sent me some photos of my brother, Mustaqim, I was able to verify it was him. Seeing the full story on social media about how Hossein saved Mustaqim from the side of the street, I couldn't hold back my tears. Hossein is like a brother to me. I pray to Allah every day for Hossein. He is a truly selfless man. Our father passed away when we were little, and I left our village to look for work in the city. Neighbors told me that our mother had given my little brother to a lady so he could have a better future with her. My mother didn't understand very well that Mustaqim is also mentally disabled and can't take care of himself, especially living with strangers. Someone had given my mother the idea to give him away for a better life, so she did. I looked for him based on the information I had from the neighbors, but I was unsuccessful. Due to a lack of money, I had to go back to work in the city for a few months, praying every day to Allah for Mustaqim's safe return. I had a dream that he returned safely to me, and Allah made this dream come true through Hassan. Since this incident, Hossein has dedicated himself to full-time charity work spreading hope and kindness in neighboring cities. His story reminds us all of the profound impact of selfless acts. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Consider this as an act of charity. Until next time, stay vigilant.